All right. Good morning. Um, we um, had started talking about uh, fifth, what's called fifth generation hot strip mills and the, um, the fact that in uh, recent years there's been a very large number of new uh, designs for um, hot strip mills which tend to be uh, much more compact um, than the, the traditional so-called fourth generation hot strip mills and that's what we were uh, talking about. The, um, and the idea is uh, not to start from uh, thick slabs but from um, continuously cast uh, thin, thin slabs or thin, s thin strips of uh, I I instead of um, before um, that happened there was a time where um, uh, uh, people thought the evolution of the hot strip mill would go towards continuous hot strip continuously operated hot strip mills and so, so what, what's the idea here is that well in a conventional uh, hot strip mill you basically have slabs that follow on slabs after slabs right and they uh, typically um, t 10 meters long hmm? and then you get a bar that will be 100 meters long and then you'll have strip that you that you're coiling is about 500 meters long and you know and this process this stuff is processed one after the other hmm? I think mill is here and the finishing mill is here so um, the idea of endless rolling is basically what the word says is the finishing mill is in constant operation mode it just doesn't stop rolling and that of course can only happen if you basically have do away with the individual bars right and so this means that you need to weld the bars so that would that allows you if you have this technology to continuously roll without stopping basically um, it turned out that uh, the this kind of technology really didn't um, happen on a large scale and there are only I think about three uh, companies uh, who um, um, got into this um, the main reason being the the cost of the technologies because it requires uh, automatically coil boxes because you need to to have a bar ready uh, in you know, standing ready to be welded to the uh, bar that's um, already being uh, rolled and then you need very uh, advanced uh, high temperature welding technologies and that turned out to be really expensive um, because this joining machine here that you see here um, is in operation while the, this, the bar is being rolled right so you, it, it needs to move with <coughs> the end of the bars yeah <coughs> plus of course uh, you need to prepare the strip so that uh, the bar edges so it's uh, easy to weld yes it has to have the right shape and then obviously um, after welding yeah, any surface that there may be yes has to be um, 
uh, taken care of. You know, you have to flatten it so it's, it's, it doesn't give you uh, instability during rolling. And um, also, of course, uh, also uh, this edge of the bar has to be deburred and everything prepared for, for the welding. And then you obviously, um, there are not many places where you do high temperature, where you need high temperature welding. So, right, usually you'd, uh, uh, you, you don't weld in these conditions. So you, the, the technology had basically to be invented and there are different technologies, <coughs> induction welding with lasers, mechanical welds. And obviously you can see that uh, the cost of uh, investment costs and maintenance costs uh, of such an endless hot rolling mill is very considerable. So, uh, and at the time, uh, the only uh, companies who were able to invest in this technology and develop it were uh, Japanese companies who were doing very well at that time and were able to do this, uh, make these expenses uh, investments. So I don't think at this, in the current situation, these investments would have been possible. So, um, so when the big advantage was, of course, the you have don't you don't have acceleration deceleration effect. You have very homogeneous product. You have very uh, stable operation of the line because you never stop. You of course uh, have very high production capacities. Hmm? Hmm? Uh, high rolling speeds uh, can be achieved, etc. And um, and uh, but uh, again, and there are other advantages uh, which are listed here. But it's it's expensive, um, and um, because of the welding and because of the the coiling uh, technologies that had to be uh, installed. Hmm? And there are some advantages also in addition to the uh, higher productivity is the uh, the dimensions that can be. Um, uh, uh, processed in these lines are a bit more inter interesting. Typically, uh, uh, it's been reported that y they can process thinner, end up with thinner hot strip products hmm, that are uh, less than, uh, even less than one millimeter in thickness. So that's um, interesting because it, um, uh, it, it makes the process uh, a bit more versatile than the hot strip mill. Okay, so again, as I, as I said, you, this is very unlikely that um, you, um, you will encounter these, um, these hot strip mills and, and unless you, 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 specif you uh, specifically visit one of these uh, mills in, in Japan. Uh, what you will come across is the, the fifth generation, which um, hot strip mills, which are basically based on the combination of thin slab casting and direct rolling. Hmm? So that means um, you, you, do, you, you basically do two things. You get rid of the, uh, the conventional uh, cold slab to, as a starting material. You go straight from casting to rolling. And, and, and the other thing, you, you also try to have a finishing mill that's in constant operation. Hmm? Let's see how uh, these technologies have been uh, worked out. So, so the, the very first time uh, this technology was uh, started was 1989. Hmm? And there are many different technologies. So you really have to uh, watch out uh, when, uh, when you hear anybody talk about these um, mini mills typically. T mini mill is a very um, general term for these uh, types of hot strip mills or they are also called compact strip mills. Um, and so big advantage there is uh, very effective to build. Uh, also uh, cost effective. You know, they cost uh, much less than a conventional hot strip mill. And then we use uh, thin sap casting, and then you'll, you'll see uh, this is not a general rule, but in, in, uh, in the so-called CSP technology, which was the, uh, this first 
technology that was installed by an American company called Nucor. Um, it has it's a combination of thin uh, slab casting with roller uh, hearth furnaces, or which are uh, nowadays called tunnel furnaces. Hmm? And in this technology, you eliminate roughing mills, not only the, the, the processing of a uh, thick slab, and, but also you eliminate roughing altogether. Hmm? The use of a tunnel uh, furnace gives you very uniform heating of the uh, material. I shouldn't say slab, uh, perhaps uh, bar is a better word. Uh, they have lower capacities, so um, less than half of what a hot, a hot strip mill does produce, yes? And we'll see that uh, in, certainly in CSP technology, the tunnel furnace is an, is an essential new uh, piece of, of technology. Hmm? Um, all right, so production capacity, uh, about 2 million tons uh, per year. So, so if, if we want to compare things, you, uh, the traditional um, fourth generation will, will look like this. You have uh, reheating furnaces for the, the cold continuously cast uh, strip, roughing mill, finishing mill, and then the coilers. Nowadays, uh, you don't have roughing mills. You have one uh, reversing rougher. There is, in some cases, a tendency to have a... Um, a coiler here, uh, hot uh, for the bar, finishing mill, and then the uh, uh, coilers. We call these compact hot strip mills, but that's the more, the more general um, new designs for uh, fourth generation hot strip mills. And the, uh, the so-called uh, CSP technology, you cast uh, a compact... Uh, 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 directly a bar basically you keep the uh, bar in tunnel furnaces which and then uh, they're rolled directly in the finisher right so there is no um, and in order to keep the the finisher busy yes because the everything the uh, the, the bottleneck as we say the, the slowest um, uh, part of the line is the the casting here so it's limited by the casting speed, right? So you need more than one tunnel furnace and more than one caster to feed material into the finishing mill. Hmm? We'll, we'll see. Right, so this is, this is uh, a bit more of a detailed uh, view of these minimals. And uh, we just look at um, uh, three technologies. Um, there are lots of acronyms for these minimals, you know, so, such as uh, CSP, ISP, FT, CS, Conroll process, quality strip production, etc. The um, and and all of them, you know, um, pretend they're better than the others, of course, yes. Um, but so the the very first one uh, that was the uh, the, the CSP. Right, which stands for compact strip processing and is developed by SMS uh, in Germany. So there's no roughing. Hmm? You have a tunnel furnace, a finishing mill, and a run-out table coiler. Uh, the end part of most of the minimals is very similar to the end part of a, um, a conventional fourth generation hot strip mill. Um, the ISP is stands for inline strip production mm. and that's a combination of um, a, the Italian company Averdi and a German company Mannesmann Daymark yes and you'll see here a lot more complex uh, situation uh, before the finishing mill what you see is reintroduction of a roughing mill an induction heater a coil box okay so we'll, we'll, we'll try to understand why that is basically the reason why that happens is that because the the CSP mill is has metallurgically limitations so you you can't really do 
um, advanced steels with this, uh, this approach. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's, that's why you see a lot more variety in, in recent designs and, uh, upstream here. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, flexible uh, thin slab casting uh, is, uh, looks like this. You have a, uh, a tunnel furnace. So it looks a little bit like the CSP. A roughing mill looks a little bit like the inline strip processing, and then a heated transfer table um, before the, uh, uh, the finishing mill. Hmm? So there's lots of t different technologies there. And here you have um, some designs here. Um, what is uh, important is uh, uh, to focus on, on the thickness of the uh, the strip that you uh, cast. So I, I want to remind you of the fact that in a conventional mill, you have 250 millimeter thick uh, slabs. Yes. Here you see we are uh, we are much much lower in thickness. Mm -hmm. So about depending on uh, the technology uh, half to a fifth of that thickness. So this also means that the casting, the continuous casting technology is different from the continuous casting technology that you use for a, 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 a conventional hot strip mill. Hmm? And then it very important is this, this furnace. The, as I already said, the conventional or, or older uh, CSP technology uses uh, tunnels, uh, heating tunnel, yeah. Uh, but um, other technologies will, will use inductive reheating of the slab, of, of the strip rather. Um, here another one, yes. Um, capacity, I remind you of the fact that conventional hot strip mills about close to 5 million tons a year. Here you see that um, the production capacity is hovers at around a million uh, tons. Yes. Um, okay. So we'll uh, because we can't. We it's, it's not really necessary to review all these different technologies in detail. We'll kind of look. Uh, focus on CSP in particular and ISP. Um, so uh, the, the design of the mold here is important. You have a, f uh, a funnel shaped mold mm -hmm. um, uh, because you need to have a very thin um, uh, strip that you cast. The the mold, instead of being parallel, has this uh, special shape so that you can a funnel shape so that you can um, cast uh, thinner uh, slabs, yes? Uh, and it has a, a tunnel uh, furnace, of course. In the case of this, this ISP, we don't have parallel. We, we have a. We don't have this funnel shape. We have a parallel mold. The reason is uh, we're actually casting thicker, uh, thicker strip, yeah. And um, and we are rough rolling this uh, thicker strip, hmm? uh, compensating for the heat losses and and getting a uh, homogeneous. Uh, temperature distribution in the bar here is achieved with in a, a tunnel furnace, a very long uh, furnace. Here it's achieved by induction heaters. So you basically reheat the, uh, the bar. Hmm? And then there is this what is called a Cremona furnace. A Cremona furnace is basically a, a, a special coil box. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a more advanced coil box in the sense that it, um, 
it allows you to coil, yes, and decoil, yes, so that you basically are able to, f to have continuous uh, flow of material through your finishing mill. Yeah? Uh, because you don't have this uh, long tunnel furnace, it, it's even smaller than a, uh, a CSP. Hmm? This is in, in terms of the, the size. So a conventional hot strip mill will be at least uh, 600 meters in length yeah, because you have uh, uh, casters, yes, you have reheating furnace, you have a roughing mill, yes. In the CSP technology, which is shown here, you do away with this, you do away with the roughing, yes, and the, the continuous caster is now moved here, yes, and provides uh, strands of uh, material that go into this, um, this finisher. Now you can see that uh, there's only one finishing mill and two uh, furnaces, right? So there is an additional uh, special furnace uh, here, which we call the, the swivel furnace that, will, that allows you to transfer. So if it, there is a bar here that's ready to roll, you can transfer it to, to the front of the finishing mill with this, this swivel um, uh, um, furnace. So the CSP plant will be about half the size of uh, a conventional plant. And then you can, uh, th there are uh, technologies nowadays where you, where you cast very, very thin uh, strip, yes, and then give a minimal amount of reduction. There's only one stand here, one or two stands, and you coil the material, yes. From a point of view of technology, it kind of makes sense. You know, it's interesting to, um, you, you can obviously see that the investments here will be considerably less than there, yes? Um, uh, but um, there are lots of metallurgical things that are also impacted by this technology. Hmm? Uh, for instance, obviously, um, we know that uh, uh, grain size control is very important uh, in terms of uh, to achieve certain metallurgical uh, properties. Yes? Now, um, obviously, you could do some grain size control when you were doing the reheating. You would grain size control when you were doing the roughing. Yes? When you take these things away, yes, you lose the, uh, the ability to change or control grain size at that level. Hmm? Uh, the other thing is um, that um, here the material doesn't go through transformations anymore. It goes right from uh, being cast to uh, being uh, uh, rolled, yes? So you basically have a, at the entrance of the, the finishing mill, you basically have a cast microstructure. Yeah? Right. Okay, so let's first look at uh, economical benefits. Uh, obviously, capital investments are smaller. The energy inputs are smaller. Hmm? Uh, there's a high level of automation. And that probably impacts also the, the cost reduction, although um, hot strip mills, conventional hot strip mills are also highly automated. Um, so b because they're shorter, you have much less space required. And then it's, it's a flexible process. And that's the important reason, and it's um, uh, easily adaptable to market requirements. You see, um, in in a, uh, a compact strip mill, yes, um, you, can, you can basically produce what the market requirements are. You don't have to have a, a big amount of slabs lying around waiting for 
uh, customers. Yes? You, can, you just uh, cast what you produce, uh, what, you, what, you are, uh, what you're selling. Yes? So it's, um, it's, it's, it's more flexible, basically. Um, most of these uh, lines work with combination of electric arc furnace in combination with continuous casters. So uh, these minimals are usually smaller, uh, uh, or the technologies without s within smaller steel companies. Hmm? Um, although larger companies have also invested in this technology. Now, we'll talk, give an example of POSCO in a moment. Uh, of course, uh, low CO2 emissions. Um, in general, when you use the uh, electric arc furnace route and minimal route, you uh, automatically produce less CO2. Um, uh, however, we should never forget that we're making products and that the products need to have uh, properties um, and um, in these uh, thin strip uh, direct rolling technologies, right, uh, TSDR, um, we have um, smaller center line segregation during solidification and smaller inclusion size. Um, uh, that is because we have higher solidification rates, the uh, uh, slabs or the strips rather, being um, thinner. Um, a more uniform thin slab distribution temper temperature before entry into the finishing mill, that's right, certainly when you use a, a, a tunnel furnace. However, you do have very coarse as cast microstructures that you, uh, that you uh, enter the finishing mill hmm? because you don't have austenite ferrite and ferrite to austenite transformations which will refine the microstructure. You see this slab, when it's cast, it goes through transformation and when you reheat it, it also goes through transformation. So you refine the microstructure. When you do the roughing, you get rid of the ast cast microstructure. Hmm? So that's not available in um, uh, this uh, case. You you directly roll uh, a, a, a product that is as cast. Hmm? Higher nitrogen and residual elements, certainly if the steel you're getting is from electric arc furnace, yes, you will easily have more than double the amount of nitrogen in your steels. That has an impact on the kind of uh, uh, precipitates that are formed in your material. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you're working with a, uh, if you're trying to make HSLA steel, which contains niobium, uh, these very high levels of ni uh, nitrogen will impact the, the precipitation of the niobium and, the, and, and it leads to difficulties in obtaining good HSLA steels. And we have, of course, residual elements uh, and, any time you use scrap-based uh, material. Hmm? The reduction is, of course, much smaller. Yeah. Here we start with two, 250 uh, millimeters, and we end up with something that e that's easily 5 millimeters. Yes? So you have a huge amount of reduction. Hmm? In, this, in the other case, in this case, um, you know, your 100 millimeters to 50 millimeters to 5 millimeters, the amount of reduction and microstructural refinement that you can achieve will be much smaller. Hmm? Okay? Uh, right, and, and there are some difficulties uh, in continuous casting for peritactic compositions, hmm? uh, but I think think that, that these things can be addressed in, in practice. But as you know, peritactic grades uh, do give you problems and they, they're a little bit more serious in the case of this um, uh, compact strip processing. So this is a big difference here between a conventional 
system and a, a compact strip uh, system is that you do not cool to room temperature. You go straight from the um, caster into a tunnel furnace, yes, where you homogenize the bar and then you do the uh, cold rolling. So basically, if, if, we, um, if we compare the technologies, hmm, uh, this, this is the conventional route, for instance, that you will see uh, in uh, POSCO, yes, going from blast furnace, steel making plant, caster, reheating furnace, roughing mill, finishing mill, pickling, etc., cold rolling. You will go in the the direct steel making routes if you want. You go from an EAF plant, electric arc furnace, steel making, yes. You go to a slab caster, yes, and then directly into a uh, roughing mill. If you have a thin slab caster, you can go straight into the finishing mill, and you have strip casters, yes, which basically cast strip. And there is only one uh, rolling uh, uh, step, yes. So you, you, the strip you make is, is basically not even um, passing through a, a regular finishing mill uh, before going, uh, being coiled and, and going into the, the pickling. Hmm? Okay, so, so CSP plant shown here, yes. So you have two strands of materials. You keep them in a tunnel furnace before you go to the finishing mill. And there are two, yes, because the casting speeds here are too low to feed, to feed the whatever you cast directly and continuously into the finishing mill. Hmm? After that, the coils you make, are you can basically process them the way you process a conventional coil. Hmm? So that you can go, they can go straight to the market or then go to cold rolling uh, plants uh, as we will see uh, later. Hmm? Okay, so let's uh, now a little bit uh, have a look at the uh, compact strip uh, process. So you have a, a casting machine consisting of a ladle turret, uh, you have an oscillating mold, yes, strand guides, a pinch roll at the end, and then a shear to cut the, uh, the, um, the material, yes. This is, so and the material is directly put in a soaking furnace, it's a tunnel furnace, and at the end of it there is a swivel table yeah, that, that so that you can enter the bar, put the bar in front of the, the hot strip mill. Mm -hmm. um, there may be a shear at the beginning of the hot strip mill. Of course, there'll be a descaler, yes, and guides to guide the um, material uh, to center the, the strip in the uh, stands, uh, the first stand. Then you have a rolling mill, yes, uh, you can call it a rougher or a finisher, um, doesn't really matter at, at this stage. And usually you have five to seven stands, yes? In recent technologies, um, we see a larger number of stands because people want to give larger reductions. Yeah? Um, the cooling line is basically a laminar cooling. The, that we discussed for a hot strip mill, and then you have down coiler and, and marking of the strips. This is a, a picture of actual uh, temperatures. Hmm? So you see that the, the so you have the, um, let's look at the yellow line. The yellow line is the temperature at the core of the material, yes. You see that the, um, the temperatures, yes, uh, let's say typical carbon steels, I'm sorry, but the line is not very straight, but you, um, you basically 
ha keep the material in the austenite temperature range. And, and you never go through transformations. Yeah? In, in a, a normal steel, a normal uh, conventional steel plant, after the casting you go down and back up, so you have two transformations, yes? Um, and then you also have a roughing, hmm? so that's uh, absent in this case. And the typical temperature here at which you keep the, the bar before you roll it is 1100 uh, degrees C and the, the, the holding time is uh, about 20 minutes, yes? And you can see how long these bars are approximately. Uh, they're about as long as the uh, tunnel furnace. And the tunnel furnace is about 100 meters uh, long. So it's, about, it's, it's, it's a long furnace. Yeah? Okay, so it's, it's as if you, you had the entire um, traditional bar uh, in, a, in a special uh, furnace. Hmm? This is important here. This is the bottleneck of all these technologies, yes? Is the difficulty to cast to at high speeds, yeah? Five, five to six meters per minute. Yeah? So I, I want to remind you six meters per minute. Hmm? If you have six meters per minute and you ca um, what did I say? Um, no. And say you're casting something that's 60, um, 60 uh, millimeters uh, thick, yeah? yeah? So, and, and you end up with a, a product that is a six uh, millimeter uh, thick, yes? Six millimeter. So you know that this, the exit speed must be uh, 10 times that value, right? Because it's if the process is continuous, right? So uh, that makes I have uh, 60 meter per minute. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, uh, basically one meter per second, right? Now if you compare this with the uh, exit speed of a hot strip mill, it's very, very slow, yes? yes. So uh, obviously it's, it's higher than this. I would, uh, what I want to say is if you were to, to feed this strand straight into the, the finishing mill, it would, it would run very slowly, yes? Uh, obviously you don't want this, you want to have high and that's the trouble. You cannot, you cannot cast faster. Hmm? You cannot cast faster. So you need to have more casters in parallel. Yes? And of course, they will produce strip and, uh, or bars, rather. And, and so you need to keep them uh, ready yes? um, so that they can be rolled one after the other. Okay? Right, and, and so here you have some, uh, some detailed numbers of uh, what's happening in the, um, uh, with the, um, the, the, the finishers. Um, again, um, it's uh, interesting to, to look at the, uh, the process as you, um, as you do the rolling. So we have um, our thin slab 1100 for 20 minutes in the in the furnace yes um, and then you uh, you cool down to around a uh, thousand degrees C yes uh, and in this case we have six stands yes mm -hmm. the temperature decrease is uh, five to ten five to ten uh, degrees per minute, yes? <coughs> and, um, and you can see the reductions here, yes? They go from high reductions at the beginning to much lower reductions towards the end. Very similar 
to the type of reductions we see in a uh, in in, a, in the finishing of a, um, a hot strip mill. Hmm? Okay, and again, uh, the the end temperature here, yes, is 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 high enough so that you process the materials generally in fully austenitic range and uh, you do the transformation during the, in the laminar cooling. Okay, okay so it's a picture here of a um, such a CSP production line. Yes, um, you see here this idea of the swivel furnace. Hmm? So the furnaces will have bars, will be parallel, yes, and there will be bars ready for the finishing, uh, tandem finishing mill, yes. There's only one for the three of them, so in order to make, to align, to bring this bar into, uh, uh, ready for the, um, the, the, the rolling, you need these swivel furnaces or a swivel furnace that that will take the bar from the side furnace to the uh, the center of the of the mill hmm? and again you can see as a consequence you have a furnace you have the you will have the tunnel furnace and the length of the unit will increase considerably in addition, because you need these swivel furnaces uh, also present. Hmm? Okay. Right, so here you can see uh, this swivel furnace. Uh, right, so again, um, let's have a look at this, this particular uh, unit here. Yes, it's, it's similar to the, the one I, I presented here. Mm -hmm. So you usually need at least uh, two strands or three strands being cast uh, simultaneously. Mm -hmm. um, the, the thickness of the slabs uh, are typically, so if, if you want to remember a number, 50 millimeters is a good number to remember. And the casting speed as I said, is much, is really low, yes. The, it's, it's not much different than the casting speed in, uh, in a continuous caster for slabs, but in continuous cast, you, you cast a lot more volume, right? So, um, and, and so one of the solutions to uh, improving productivity for this technology is to increase the casting speed, yes? And that's not an easy task, yes? Mm -hmm. So, but in general, you'll see people casting at four, five, six meters per minute, yes? The tunnel furnace, 250 meters, of which uh, a considerable part of the length is a uh, swivel furnace, yes? as you can see here. The slab uh, or, or bar temperature is uh, 1150 typically in this case. Mm -hmm. And uh, the finishing uh, typically five to seven stands. In this case you have seven. Yeah? And the width um, 1600. Um, now strip thickness, and this is important Yes, is a, a conventional hot strip mill will rarely um, have thicknesses less than three. Yes, that's you see it's not impossible. Okay, it, and it, it, there are uh, hot strip mills that that can produce 2.5 millimeters, but in general, that's you know uh, most produce five to six and thicker material, yes? In, um, in the case of a, a compact strip mill or ISP technology, you can easily go to the millimeter uh, domain of, of casting. Okay. So millimeter thicknesses uh, are 
uh, not a, a difficulty. Hmm? And typical finest uh, thickness is here. You can see here for a some uh, low carbon grades are around a millimeter. Hmm? Rolling speeds uh, are of course not as low as this uh, example I, uh, I suggested. Hmm? Uh, so don't forget this number if you've written it down. This, this is an imaginary number, yes, that you would end up with if you would feed, actually feed this casting speed directly in the finisher mill, yes? Uh, obviously uh, that's not being done. You have these uh, parallel tunnel furnaces and, and so you can uh, move up to uh, uh, 20 meters per second. Hmm? Remember one of the reasons you, you do want to roll fast is uh, there are metallurgical grades such as the uh, high strength uh, low alloy grades where you, it's essential that you achieve very small interpass deformation times, yes? Hmm? And so th that's one of the reasons why you need to achieve these, these, uh, these uh, 20 uh, meters per second. Hmm? But in a, uh, a conventional hot strip mill, the, the exit uh, uh, velocities are much higher. Hmm? can be higher, excuse me. Right, so um, there are uh, different concepts uh, in this, um, this CSP, yes? What you usually see is a batch approach where uh, the caster produces bars, yes? Separate bars which are rolled in batch uh, mode, yes? You can have um, so, uh, so every bar is, gives you one coil, yes? Or you can do what's called semi-endless, yes? Where you, you basically cast not endlessly, but with very long, uh, very long bars, yes? And you feed them continuously into the uh, the finisher, yes, and then before coiler, yes, because one bar can give you more than one coil, you need to have a, a shear, and it's a flying shear which, which has to move with the strip, hmm? the moving strip, and in principle you could do endless rolling, yes, casting, go right into the finishing mill, the cooling, and then down coiler and in order to make uh, uh, individual coils you'd, you'd again need to have a flying shear. Obviously this technology, this, this endless rolling is only possible if you have a very thin strip, yes, uh, that and, and your casting speed is high enough as I explained. <coughs> yeah. So before we go on to uh, some of these other uh, technologies, let's have a look at this, uh, this tunnel furnace, because that was uh, one of the uh, important parts of the um, CSP technology. So it's also called a roller hearth furnace. Ro uh, why does, where does the roller come from? That's this just uh, because the, uh, the bar is, is basically put on rollers. Yes, on rollers, roller support, yes. Um, uh, Water-cooled, insulated rolls transport the, uh, the bar. You have three zones, heating, a soaking, and a buffer zone. Again, uh, we don't heat with uh, electricity. We usually heat with uh, natural gas. 10 minutes to heat up, and uh, the, the total time in the furnace is typically 20, 20 minutes. Hmm? The temperature at which the material comes out of the caster and goes into the, uh, the furnace will, 
is in the range of uh, uh, 950 to uh, 1050 and you deliver typically the uh, material at 1100 degrees C. And because you're basically heating the slab, yes, uh, from all directions, yes, the uniformity of heating is, is, uh, is quite good. Hmm? So this is definitely a metallurgical positive point of this uh, CSP uh, technology, hmm? this homogeneous uh, thing. So, so here is a picture of the, um, uh, the inside of such a furnace. Uh, you can see these uh, rollers, yes. They're coated, obviously they have to work at very high temperatures, so coated by refractories. They are uh, mounted on water cool shafts, or you can even have um, dry rolls, and there are quite a few of them, a few hundred of these rolls inside a single furnace. And this is, this is what the thing looks like. So with a... Uh, in actual uh, CSP, so you, you have these very, very long uh, furnaces here. You see two of them, yes? And, um, and, and you can see here the slab coming out of the furnace and into the, uh, these are the two first stands of the, of the finisher. Hmm? And in this case, the, uh, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the furnaces can move sideways, yes, so that they're positioned in front of the um, in front of the, um, the finisher uh, when needed. Hmm? So, very important uh, CSP technology is very good if uh, we're looking at low cost production of standard steel grades. Um, many steel companies, in particular the big integrated steel companies, have been very interested in trying to use this technology to, uh, to get uh, lower costs hot strip mills alternatives. That has not worked very well because uh, the um, uh, big integrated mills need more flexibility and uh, need to make, very often also need to make uh, more value added products which require a lot more metallurgical uh, knowledge than um, and uh, changes and controls that you can, uh, which are difficult to achieve in these uh, compact strip mills. Hmm? Um, but if you're producing a, uh, for a relatively local market, uh, standard grades, then um, you're in shape with a, um, a CSP mill. And you can see here lots of different things that a, this typical product mix for a, um, a CSP-based um, producer. It's got all kinds of um, um, grades, but most of the production as you can see here, 70% uh, of it is just low carbon steels. So these are steels that are very, very, which, which we basically call them commercial grades, yes, uh, not demanding in terms of uh, mechanical properties. Um, and um, so you can eat, it's relatively easy to achieve the requirements in terms of composition, microstructure, and properties. Um, but um, as, as soon as you um, uh, are confronted with the need to make more advanced products, yes, um, you, um, the, the CSP technology falls short. Yes? And that's why uh, we have seen um, the evolution hmm, of uh, the original CSP technology. And one of the important changes has been the reintroduction of some kind of roughing. Yes? So um, the idea is now is to cast, not to cast that thin a strip, yes, and, uh, and roll it, rough roll it. Yes? 
So the new concept uh, derived from CSP approach address the following requirements, those related to production of advanced steel grades. Yeah? And these um, have been uh, the drivers of the new developments. Hmm? And so what we see is that uh, reintroduction of a roughing stands and instead of using the, uh, the large uh, tunnel uh, furnaces, the use of coil boxes. Because what does a coil box do? Basically, you get a very homogeneous temperature yeah, and you control the heat loss. Hmm? So um, it's a good alternative to the um, a tunnel furnace. Otherwise, again, the finisher, the laminar cooling and the coiling stays the same. Okay? Right, so this, this would be a, a, a possibility here. Mm -hmm. you, you, you cast, you can have, or not, depending on situation, some uh, tunnel furnaces, yes. The, um, you have a shifter uh, furnace, yes, that will bring the, uh, the, the bar that's ready to be rough rolled in, into uh, line with the uh, uh, rougher stands. Mm -hmm. So here you have the, the roughers. Yes, they usually operate in tandem, mm -hmm. so that it's, it's not a reversible mill. Mm -hmm. Then the strip goes into the coil box, yeah, and it's uncoiled when the uh, finisher is available for rolling. Mm -hmm. Laminar cooling, down coiler. All right. So you can see that, um, and, and the reason basically is refinement of the microstructure um, and improvement of metallurgical quality in the um, in this case. So um, basically, um, that is that concept. Yeah, is uh, is called the ISP concept. Hmm? So you see here, uh, there are a few uh, variants on this concept. For instance, one of the uh, things you see is that there is a, a soft reduction of the, the strip. Yeah? Soft reduction is um, when the, uh, the material comes out of the caster, yes, the central part of it may not be uh, fully uh, solidified. And what the soft reduction does, it squeezes out the last remaining liquid, it squeezes it out so that um, you uh, reduce the amount of um, segregation in the center, yes, and also avoid porosities in the center of, uh, of this um, thinner uh, slab. Even though we've, um, we, we still have a, uh, these tunnel furnaces, which are uh, long, the, the, the total length of this uh, ISP, uh, the ISP plants is, is about half the length, a little over half the length of a conventional hot strip mill. So you, it's still a very compact um, uh, tech, uh, technology. Yeah? And in particular, the compactness comes from the, in the use of the, the coil box. As you know, coil box allows you to, to uh, reduce the size of your plants uh, considerably. Okay. One of the uh, 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 interesting uh, uh, technologies that are very similar is ESP line. I like to um, say a few words about this because in uh, in Korea. Uh, 
uh, POSCO does have an ESP line, so you, you may be uh, uh, involved in some uh, uh, projects related to this. It's a uh, technology originally, uh, uh, or designed that originally comes from uh, um, uh, German uh, firms and an Italian steel producer. So this is the, the ESP technology. Um, one of the advantages is apparently that you can uh, produce very thin uh, material, 0.8 millimeters. So there's mean, there may, that means that there are many applications which use these, these kind of thicknesses, yes? Um, and the product is very cost competitive because you, there's no need for cold rolling anymore. No need for cold rolling. Yeah. So how does it look like? You have a uh, continuously uh, cast strip here. There is what's called a liquid core reduction, right? That, that's this here, this soft uh, reduction here. Uh, then you have a high mill reduction, yes. You can see here three uh, stands uh, tandem, yes. The uh, strip, uh, so there is a shear here, yes. So you cut off bars, yes. Instead now of um, going into the um, uh, tunnel furnace, there are um, alternatives, two alternatives. One is that you go into a induction heating furnace, yes? So that's electrical uh, and very fast heating, and then straight into the finishing mill, or um, you have the concept of getting the temperature right and then coiling the material in a so-called Cremona furnace. So it's basically, you can think of it as a, um, a coil box which contains two coils. Okay? So this, this Cremona furnace can coil A, make a coil and uncoil at the same time. Yes? And then, uh, so when this coiler is empty, yes, it, they can switch position, yes, the, the, the coiled uh, mandrel can, can now move up and be decoiled and then the, the one that was free uh, becomes available to coil the next bar. Hmm? All right. And here you have some distances, less than 200 meters in length. So considerably shorter and more compact uh, <coughs> uh, uh, lines uh, are, are now available. The, the, the company uh, associated with the, uh, the develop this development is, is called Averdi. It's a, a, a smaller steel producer, mini mill in, in northern Italy. And you can see very, very short. Uh, uh, let me see if there are any. Uh, yeah, so, so this is important now. Uh, is the, the reintroduction of a relatively heavy reduction in um, a, a roughing mill, basically. Yeah? That's really important. A, um, yeah, the induction heater, big induction heater, so you get the temperature right um, before the finishing mill. That's, those are uh, important uh, aspects of this uh, of this mill. Okay, the one in uh, so uh, this is the original Averdi uh, technology. The one that's uh, is installed here in Korea by POSCO is called uh, has its own name, Compact Endless Mill. Uh, it's also uh, very, uh, if I may go back, 170 meters in length, so very 
very compact, yes. Um, the uh, important feature is the ability to cast at higher speeds. That's a very key improvement in this uh, in this line. Uh, you can I you remember four point five to six meter per minute was uh, is, is a industry standard. This has been improved to eight meters uh, per minute. Yes. So production levels can raise to close to two million tons per year. Mm -hmm. For metallurgical reasons, um, the, uh, there is a roughing mill. You have an induction heating, yes, so that you get the, the temperature right. Um, and then you do away with any tunnel furnaces, but you use a coil box. Uh, it's actually a, a Cremona furnace, like the one I explained, uh, with two mandrels. Hmm? And these are some typical uh, production numbers. Okay? Uh, the, the casting speed is not uh, normally uh, 8 meters per minute. It's closer to 6 meters per minute. Yes, And you can see here uh, what the, the, the type of reductions you have. The, as, as expected, because you have a roughing mill, the, uh, the thin slabs are not as thin as, you know, you can in principle uh, cast them. They're 80, so they're on the, on the thicker side of the uh, compact uh, strips, hmm? 80 millimeters. And, um, yeah, and, and products are thin, okay, two millimeters and less. Okay, so that's a far cry from uh, the five to six or you know, typically six uh, millimeters that are being produced in a uh, conventional hot strip mill. Hmm? Right, so th this, this is schematically uh, the production line in. So uh, similarly, to the um, situation that you have in a, uh, a hot strip mill, you can look at uh, what happens in such a line. Uh, so you start off with a relatively coarse gamma grain. The roughing mill that you use now will allow you to uh, get a, f a, ref a grain refinement. Yes, The heat you lost during the roughing, you gain back during the induction heating. In the coil box, the temperature is uh, equalized and there's very little loss. Hmm? Then say you're making a, um, an HSLA steel, yes, you, the material will contain niobium additions, etc., so that you have a temperature of non-recrystallization and a zone of non-recrystallization, yes, in which you do the finishing roughing, right? So in this case, hmm, you get deformed gamma grains hmm, with deformation bands and lots of dislocations, so that when you go through the transformation in the cooling line, yes, the alpha grains are formed in strained or deformed gamma. Hmm, and as a consequence, you get a, a refinement of the microstructure. In the cooling line, you can play around with the, uh, with the, um, uh, the transformations so that, for instance, you have a stepped cooling, yes, and, and you can then make a, an interesting, a more interesting microstructure. In this particular case, and we'll talk about this um, in, the, in the next uh, lectures, is uh, we, we try to make a, what's called a, a, a dual phase steel a dual phase steel, yes? and so we use a stepped cooling. Hmm? But uh, basically, uh, this line allows you to not only have a uh, cost-effective small line, flexible line, but also a line that is able to
produce high added value products mm, with more complex metallurgical roots. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, thin slab uh, uh, are also used for, for many diverse uh, applications, this uh, thin slab technologies. This is an example here of a line that produces uh, Arctic grades, uh, Arctic steel grades, API X70, yes, which is used to make uh, piping, piping for uh, oil and gas, for the oil and gas industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're usually made from um, uh, material that will be um, oh, yeah, I can move this. Um, uh, that can um, that I that is then welded. You make uh, uh, welded uh, pipes with this. Okay, so this um, in contrast to uh, the POSCO line we just saw. This this line is actually making relatively uh, thick 10 millimeter uh, strip. Hmm? So you, uh, but the technology is the same. You have a continuously, a continuous caster. Casting speed, again, maximum six meters per minute. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you go through tunnel furnace in this case. Uh, you have a descaler and then roughing stands. Yes, the roughing stands. And the uh, you tip so the the bar here the the the, uh, the thickness is again on the the thicker side around the 100 uh, millimeters. You have towards the end of your caster here. You have again this soft reduction. Yes, which controls the liquid pool that's left inside in the center of your uh, strip. Yes, and as you squeeze it, you, know, you you limit center line segregation and also the grain size distribution eventually. Mm -hmm. So you have a thicker slab here. It goes through a tunnel furnace to equalize the temperature. The uh, uh, then you go to a tandem rougher, yes. Typical uh, example of the what you get at the exit of the rougher is a 40 millimeters, so that kind of doubles the the length of your uh, your transfer bar, about 70 meters. You go through a. Uh, um, a transfer uh, position where you uh, keep the uh, the bar heated, yes, uh, and then you go through the the finish. Why why isn't he, why isn't there a a um, a coil box here or a uh, a Cremona furnace? The uh, the bar is pretty thick, right? Because we're making ten millimeter thick. Uh, material, right? So uh, probably to s you know uh, investment costs, yes, um, or or other things uh, such as. Uh, but but in the case of when you're making thinner products, it's it does make sense hmm, to 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 think about a Cremona uh, furnace, um, right? Laminar cooling and uh, down coiler. Finishing exit temperature. Right. So, so these are um, basically the uh, most important technologies uh, that you should remember uh, as alternative to hot strip mill is, is the CSP technology and the ISP, or in the case of POSCO, the uh, CEM C -E -M, uh, technologies. There are other technologies as, uh, which, where we, um, which is and in particular interesting is the CPR, yeah? casting, pressing, rolling. Uh, and, and here 
the idea is, is, is basically to, to have a, a hot strip production that, does, that uses a near net shape casting. Yeah? So you're basically trying to cast the product. Yeah? And, and, uh, and to make very thin 2 millimeters to 25 millimeter strip production, yes, um, without much uh, rolling at all. Mm -hmm. So the, you, you basically make, ex this is the, the caster here, you basically make a very, very thin strip of metal, yes, comes out of this caster. And this is the, the technology here. You have a ton dish which uses roll casting, not a conventional continuous caster. The, uh, you have some pinch roll, a small loop of material to control the, uh, the input of the rolling mill. And there is some heating device to, to do the deformation at the right temperature, induction heater or other, and then a single rolling mill. Yes? So you basically cast and roll and uh, coil continuously, absolutely continuously. Um, as far as I know, uh, so this technology is uh, being developed in Europe by the Tucson Group, but I don't know if, if actually uh, if it can actually be considered a, a commercial process at this stage. All right, so. Um, Sorry that I went over time, but I, I want to make sure I finish this, uh, this section today. So we've discussed the uh, alternative to strip mills. What you need to remember of, uh, are the CSP and the uh, ESP technologies. There are other technologies. Um, and um, remember that the, the, their cost effectiveness makes them very attractive, uh, but that from a metallurgical point of view, they, they do have limitations, in particular when it comes to advanced uh, steel grades, yes. Uh, but, uh, you know, whatever opportunities they offer, they shouldn't be uh, underestimated and also are a reflection of the, the, uh, the very uh, active uh, research and development that's being done in the area of, um, of hot strip mill uh, designs. Okay, thank you for your uh, attention.